Welcome back to ABC 7 at 6 weekend. Families, friends, and loved ones of the shooting victims are still waiting for the state trial in which the shooter is eligible for a death penalty sentence if convicted. Many El Pasoans ask what has taken so long. Here is a timeline. It all started on August 3rd, 2019, when Patrick Crucius carried out a mass shooting at the Sierra Vista Walmart. 22 people were killed. The next day, law enforcement officials and prosecutors held a news conference, and the El Paso District Attorney at the time said he would seek the death penalty. On October 10th, Crucius made his first public appearance in the county courthouse. He pleaded not guilty to capital murder. On February 6th of 2020, Crucius was also accused of 90 federal charges, including 45 hate crimes. But federal prosecutors said they would decide at a later time whether to seek the death penalty. This meant Crucius had a separate federal case and a state case, each with the possibility of going to trial. On April 25th, 2020, Guillermo Memo Garcia died. He had spent nine months in the hospital after being shot. That brought the death toll to 23 and led to an additional charge on both the state and federal cases. On July 13th, ABC7 reported that in court documents, Crucius's lawyers argued they needed more time to prepare for the federal trial. They cited the COVID-19 pandemic halting most court hearings and the massive amount of evidence. The next day, Ivan Rosales defeated James Montoya in a primary runoff election for El Paso District Attorney. With no Republican opponent, she replaced longtime DA Jaime Esparza, who had decided to not seek election a month before the Walmart shooting. A month before she was sworn into office on December 2nd, 2020, ABC7 learned Rosales was planning to make 200 DA's office employees reapply for their jobs. Reportedly, she lost about 25 percent of them, including some prosecutors working on the Crucius case. On April 17th, 2021, ABC7 interviewed Yvonne Rosales as the new district attorney about her first 100 days in office. Rosales said she planned to also seek the death penalty, but in an uncustomary move, she said she would defer to the federal government to try its case first. More than a year later, on May 24th, 2022, Rosales said during a news conference the delay in trying Crucius was because of a backlog caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Soon after, Rosales issued a statement saying she hoped the state trial would happen in the summer of 2023. A few days later, Judge Sam Medrano issued a gag order on the case, prohibiting prosecutors, lawyers, law enforcement officers, and witnesses from discussing the case with journalists. The judge cited Rosales' statement about hoping to have a trial by the summer of 2023. He said her office had not made a single filing in the case since she assumed office. On the third anniversary, former prosecutor Amanda Enriquez discussed the case with ABC7. And the next day, ABC7 and other journalists received an email criticizing Enriquez and Judge Medrano. The email came from an account belonging to the wife of Alexander Hoffman, who died in the shooting, and the email was signed by their son. Over the next two months, prosecutors were pulled from the case or resigned from the office entirely, and removal and recusal petitions were filed against both D.A. Rosales and Judge Medrano. On October 6, 2022, a lawyer representing the Hoffman family filed a report accusing the D.A.'s office of impersonating them in that email sent to journalists. The family said Vinton Municipal Judge Roger Rodriguez and his wife, on behalf of the D.A.'s office, wrote those emails. The DA's office, in turn, accused the Hoffman family's attorney of bias. On November 1st, El Paso County Attorney Joan Bernal filed a notice of intent to prosecute the dismissal petition against DA Rosales. On November 28th, DA Rosales announced her plan to resign from office in December. And on December 1st, 2022, Judge Medrano ordered Rosales to appear at a special hearing in which the Hoffman family accused her accomplice, Roger Rodriguez, of impersonation and intimidation. Rosales appeared but invoked the Fifth Amendment. On December 14th, Rosales resigned her position after less than two years on the job. On the same day, Texas Governor Greg Abbott appointed Republican Bill Hicks to serve as El Paso District Attorney. He later said he would continue to seek the death penalty in the state case. 
On January 17th, 2023, federal prosecutors announced they would not seek the death penalty against Crucius. And three weeks later, Crucius pleaded guilty in federal court, avoiding a trial on those charges. But there was a sentencing hearing in July, allowing victims and families to address Crucius in person before he received 90 consecutive life sentences on July 7th, 2023, weeks ahead of the fourth anniversary of the shooting. On September 25th, during a status hearing for the state case, the prosecutors and defense could not agree on a trial date. DA Bill Hicks said his office would be ready by the end of 2023, but Crucius's lawyers said the prosecution sent them 9 million pages in evidence. Some were duplicates, others were corrupted files. The back and forth persisted during the next two hearings. On May 28, 2024, lawyer James Montoya won the primary to become the Democratic nominee for El Paso District Attorney. He'll face D.A. Hicks in the November 5th election. If Montoya wins, it would be the fourth D.A. administration handling this five-year-old case. And Crucius is scheduled to appear in a state court on September 12th. Coming up on ABC 7 at 10 weekend, my interview with D.A. Hicks and his opponent in November, James Montoya, what they're saying about when they believe the state's case will go to trial.